I'm Dr. Mark Ritchie. I'm the director of the International Sustainable Development Studies Institute. And a lot of our work is focused on understanding the relationship between culture and ecology, especially in the global south and especially with tropical smallholder agriculturalists. The big issue about biodiversity that we feel, and I in particular feel is really important, is one that is often missed when we're talking about biodiversity in general in um, environmental science. And specifically, that's a massive biodiversity loss that we're seeing among crops. Um, there's a huge amount of indigenous knowledge around uh, food crops, and particularly in the global south. And one of the greatest losses that we're seeing in biodiversity is the lo loss of these indigenous foodways. And so that certain crops, certain species of crops, um, are going extinct because we don't have the live knowledge or the ability to continue those, especially as a dominance of industrial based farming um, and in, in specifically um, commercial large scale industrial monocropping of corn and soy and other things like that. Um, we're seeing a, a massive reduction globally in the number of food crops that people eat and the ability of people to have their own food and their own food sovereignty. So it's an interesting, the loss of biodiversity in food crops is particularly uh, an interesting issue because it's a link where human communities are the ones that are able to keep and pass down this knowledge and they're the ones that most directly benefit from them. So it's an intersection of culture and ecology. It's an ecological issue because certain crops are adapted to certain areas and we need a lot of biodiversity, especially as global warming and climate change impacts the ability to grow crops, but also as an impact around human rights because people need to be able to grow their own food and it is a food sovereignty issue um, at root. The whole movement around food sovereignty and conserving this precious biological diversity of, of food crops is a really good example of how knowledge and action has worked together. And you have on the one hand uh, local activists and um, a lot of it is driven by small-scale farmers in the Global South. Um, you have seed banks and seed exchanges happening um, throughout the Global South and the Global North as well. And it's a really good example of where knowledge of the problem has allowed people to really um, increase their ability to fight against this loss of biodiversity and also conserve this biodiverse um, resources and, and the knowledge in and around how to move this biodiversity forward. So for example, you have here in northern Thailand um, communities that have seed networks where they have a particular seed, uh, a vegetable or rice or something like that, that's adapted to a very specific ecological niche. And they're able to save those seeds, exchange them with other communities that may have different varieties, which protects them a lot because it gives you more diversity on your farm, it gives you more options for food crops, and it allows people to um, take charge and be able to have some sovereignty and have some um, empowerment over their own food and how that food is grown and who's in charge of that. There are a lot of really good opportunities to help contribute directly to the growing the biodiversity of food crops. Um, in particular, I think if you're looking in the Pacific Northwest or in the United States, um, there are a lot of networks there as well. Um, there's indigenous communities that are conserving seeds. There are seed networks and there are seed banks all around the United States and North America. And that's where action on the, on, on the part of, of students and consumers and other people is really important. When you go to a farmer's market, find out who's growing heritage seeds. Where did they get them from? Where did they learn about them? What can you do and what are things in your own food ways that you might be able to help conserve and grow the biodiversity of foods? One of the great things about um, these, these seed networks is they're very much grassroots. And so you find people trading seeds across a particular bioregion so that they can add to the resiliency and diversity of their agro ecosystems on their farms. Um, but it also is a great opportunity for people to be empowered so they know how to save seeds. And they're not dependent on the market to just have to be able to buy seeds from, from commercial growers some in which in some cases are encumbered with intellectual property problems and, and things like that and may not be very well suited to the specific bioregion where they're growing food. So one of the best things you could do is seek out local producers, find out are there seed banks around, are there people that are growing food out of this because it's, it's living knowledge and this is the sort of thing that needs to be uh, ongoing and be passed down generation to generation. So the part you can play is by seeking out people who are growing heritage crops 
seeking out people who are growing a, a, a wide variety and diversity of these crops and support that biodiversity that historically has been very um, strong in a lot of these regions, but you can look for your own bioregion and see what's happening in that area in and around seed savings, um, supporting biodiversity, seminars, there's workshops, there's all sorts of ways that you can support the biodiversity and conservation of indigenous knowledge around indigenous food ways. There's lots of resources about biodiversity and food crops. Um, Vandana Shiva, Dr. Vandana Shiva in India has written a lot about this. She's very active on social media. She's written several books that are worth looking up. Uh, look up anything on agroecology and looking and understanding how do uh, people farm using ecology as a model. So the farm is an agro ecosystem. Um, certainly look at that. Um, restoration or regenerative agriculture, uh, which looks to, to mimic um, natural ecosystems is another place to look. Lots of good documentaries online on YouTube, as well as other resources you'll find. Um, there's some really good directories that you'll find. Again, it's based on your particular bioregion. Just look for seed saving, heritage seeds, seed networks, and things like that. And you'll find this huge and very vibrant community of people that are really working actively day to day to preserve biodiversity in food crops, especially for small scale producers.